It's Daniela Spray, and she's going to talk about theorizing women in the standard of <laughs> Okay, in my research, I'll be analysing how gender divides are played out in the work of contemporary British stand-up comedy, analysing shifts and trends to show how the marginality of women in stand-up is changing as feminism and anxiety around gendered identification are now firmly on the agenda, especially in alternative stand-up. Um, so my journey so far, because I'm still quite early on in my research... Um, my interest in studying comedy began during my MA, which focused on how it could be used to convey subversive, critical ideas to mass audiences, in particular by questioning accepted notions of national identity and mainstream film narratives. However, <clears throat> I had not contextualised or thrown into question my use of psychoanalysis sufficiently, and I recognised my own subjective bias in that I chose to study comedy I personally enjoyed and identified with, essentially wanting to accord it a more highbrow status than that of pure entertainment. What became clear at the start of my doctoral research is that comedy is much more complex and contradictory. Although contemporary British ideology tells us that it is right and natural to have a sense of humour, I wanted to explore how we may play down some of comedy's darker, more repressive aspects. So by choosing stand-up, which seemed to be far less theorised than comedy in TV and film, what struck me was that the comedians I enjoyed watching and identified with were generally white men, such as Stuart Lee, Ricky Gervais and Eddie Izzard. Although there are now far more women in stand-up than there has been since its inception for music hall and working men's clubs, it still seems that women are marginalised, especially in the mainstream. Coupled with this, there appears to be quite an intense debate occurring in popular media about whether women can be funny at all, almost a desire to naturalise what is obviously a social phenomenon by trying to explain why women are inherently, biologically unfunny. In his 1905 text, Jokes and Their Relation to the Unconscious, Freud theorises how jokes enact a cathartic process by liberating us from social norms and dominant modes of rational thought through indulging in the pure pleasure and play of joke-telling. Although he does discuss more politically contentious jokes, the most obvious example of how this catharsis occurs is through wordplay. He argues that we can circumvent the rational, fixed meaning of words through wordplay, instead finding pleasure in the irrational connections between them, in terms of their sensory connotation or sound. This is why children find excessive pleasure in nonsense and repetition, as they are not as subject to rational criticism as adults are. However, what Freud foil, fails to articulate fully is that the jokes he chooses to analyse demonstrate how in modern Britain men have traditionally used ridicule and joking publicly in order to aggressively target social others and reify their own cultural dominance. He explores a joke in which two men aggressively ridicule an absent woman who has refused sexual advances in order to create a close male social bond in which they can share in laughing at the excluded silenced object the woman. What Freud fails to recognise is the jokes he chooses to analyse often involve the white male intelligentsia making fun of marginal others, such as the working classes, foreigners and women. And it's this criticism which is often levelled at psychoanalysis generally. Although it claims that we're all products of culture and civilisation, it still seems to present a universal, naturalised theory of the psyche. Freud's relief theory of joking which privileges a psychical catharsis, disavows the pleasure to be gained from mastery over others in joke-telling. So I also need to make use of historical, cultural and sociological studies of humour and stand-up to see how women have been marginalised and silenced and traditionally kept out of public speaking roles, such as public joke-telling. What psychoanalysis can bring to this is a framework for exploring exactly how Mechanisms of humour and joking can lead to the repression of the female voice and the strange disavowal of the potential of women to be funny. So one of the mechanisms I want to explore in depth is the way embarrassment and ridicule can work repressively to maintain the status quo using an interdisciplinary range of theories of embarrassment. Perhaps stand-up itself epitomises our fear of social embarrassment and awkwardness. This enacts a complex relationship between the audience and the stand-up comedian. The comedian can either reflect on their own social awkwardness or they can embarrass and humiliate the audience, heckling being an obvious example of this. 
There's a complex dialectic of confidence and mastery on one hand and inadequacy and alienation on the other, which psychoanalysis may be able to explicate more thoroughly than sociology or cultural studies can. For example, by articulating the relationship between the verbal and the visual psychical realm, realms. However, cultural and literary theory can help me to explore how humour and embarrassment have a complex historical tradition in Britain on which contemporary ideas build on. I'll just skip a slide. Um, so, one of the um, comedians that I'm looking at at the moment is Josie Long, um, and I am interested in trying to study how female comedians are kind of taking this issue on. Um, and their styles are extremely different. Although they both share similar left-wing views, um, they both employ techniques of embarrassment and annihilation in different ways. So while Lee experiments more with alienation and losing the audience, he often ridicules his audience members relentlessly um, to the point that sometimes they can't even look at him directly while he's doing his routine. Long is much more open and welcoming. She wants to unite her audience rather than divide them. So, for example, she hangs out oranges to the audience members who are laughing or responding well. She seems to want to use comedy not so much to embarrass and humiliate, um, but more to kind of get people to identify with her and, and sort of unite them in her socialist aim, which is more overtly politicised. Um, so to conclude, um, I sort of want to look at how, from the 1990s onward, there was a popularisation of a comedy of embarrassment, which was very masculinised generally, um, and how women, we're not so used to seeing women embarrass themselves and others on stage. So perhaps Josie Long might offer a way out of the type of comedy that Lee epitomises. And he does actually say that there does need to be a secondary process of identification with the audience. Um, he says that the shock horror tactics of his show, 90s Comedian, already felt dead in the water by around 2007. Um, so assuming that your goal is a kind of politicisation of your audience, perhaps more women on the scene in the alternative sphere can offer a more openly politicised type of stand-up. Thank you. Thank you.